I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. My name is Laurie, and I have a passion for textiles that have grown out of my family tradition. As a child growing up around my grandmother and great-grandmother, there were numerous projects going on, sewing, knitting, crocheting, and embroidery, and I thoroughly enjoyed being around it and in it. A special treat each summer was a visit to my grandmother's all by myself, where I got to choose my own pattern and fabric to make a project of my own. I still remember my first dress I made for myself. I was in the fifth grade and it was a corduroy print jumper. I had enough fabric left over to make my chatty Kathy a dress to match mine. Grammy, Grandma showed me how to take a piece of clothing and recut to make a new outfit for a different person. This tradition of textiles was out of necessity in caring for the family. My grandmother sewed clothes for the family to wear knitted socks and sweaters, made quilts, tablecloths, and bedspreads, all practical items used by the family. But of course their artistic expression is evident in these practical items. My mother tells me that her mother and grandmother were able to complete one knitted sock in an evening listening to the radio. In fact, my grandfather, who survived my grandmother, complained later on about having to use store-bought socks and they just weren't the same. She taught me to knit. I remember sitting next to her while all the adults were talking and knitting a hat for my doll. I would knit a row and she would purl it back across. I progressed from a hat to more complicated pieces and then spinning the yarn that I knitted. We lived in the snow and knitting seemed like a necessity as it provided warm things to wear. A green sweater knitted by my grandmother was one of my first ski sweaters. She also knitted a red and white sweater for my sister. My grandmother liked making clothes and there were always pieces left over and those pieces got made into quilts. She made quilts for each of us grandchildren and I recognized the pieces of clothing she had made for the people in the family and an expression of her love was visible in all her work. Mine, of course, was blue with a red and white heart border. I'm currently repairing one of my cousin Duane's quilts as it was sadly mistreated somewhere along the way and my grandfather rescued it knowing the hard work that went into it. Duane went in search of his fortune in his younger years and in the process lost all the treasures his grandmother had made for him and he is now sorry for that. He'll be surprised to see his restored quilt when I'm finished. I remember this rose applique quilt being made by my great-grandmother when I was about five years old. She helped me make my first doll clothes. My grandmother did very fine needlework. Probably the most remarkable example is this tablecloth she made for my mother. It's called cut work. The embroidery is on linen and then cut out. My mother still likes to embroider as well. She and I collaborated on quilts for my niece's daughters. She embroidered the pictures and I made them into quilts. By the time I was in high school, I made a lot of my own clothes. I even made clothes for my friends. I majored in art in college and went on to study textile conservation at Hampton Court in England. The study of textile conservation inclu includes learning all techniques of fabrication along with repairs, dyeing and displays of textile pieces. Today I still do textile work for private practice, but mostly I sew for myself, my family, and for fun. I still find a lot of joy in the colors, textures, and completion of my projects. The inspirations they gave me as a child have stayed with me, and that was their gift to me. So I enjoy sharing them with as many people as I can as my gift to them.